Every wildlife lover has a list of dream destinations that they just can't wait to get to. And the Amazon rainforest has been at the top of my list for many years now. Famous for being home to nearly 10% of the known species on planet Earth, this is the most biodiverse terrestrial ecosystem anywhere. For the next 14 days, I'll be living at a remote field station in the Peruvian Amazon as part of a venomous snake research team led by Ella Gedwar. One of my top snake targets on this trip actually isn't a venomous snake, but a colubrid with a very special story. My name is Benzino, and my mission is to inspire you to get outside and discover the amazing wildlife that's all around us. And in the Amazon, amazing wildlife literally is all around you. Basically, every surface here has something living on it. Now, as you can imagine, the Amazon rainforest is also one of the most competitive ecosystems on the planet, with many species developing specialized adaptations that allow them to exploit food resources or avoid predators in ways that give them an edge over competitors. But the species that I want to find actually bucks that trend of increasing specialization, and yet has somehow managed to become the most successful non-venomous snake on the entire South American continent. As I head out on a diurnal expedition to search for our target species of snake, I spot the glimmer of scales in some low-lying vegetation on the edge of the rainforest. Got him. Fast little snake, too. That is, I think, either dry maluber or chironius. This is not the species that we were searching for but it is a really cool find and a new genus of snake for me. This is a group of really fast, really active diurnal predators. And you can probably already see just based on this body shape. It is uncannily similar to something like our black racers that we see all the time back in North Carolina. These snakes can be up to around four feet long at maximum size. So this one still has some growing to do, but I would actually say that this is considered an adult specimen. So these aren't like the biggest snakes out here in the Amazon, not by a long shot. Now the dry maluber species are not technically dietary specialists, but they do seem to exhibit a high preference for lizard prey in most places where they live. We have huge eyes. I mean, I think those the eye to skull ratio of this animal I'm holding right here is actually more exaggerated than our racers back at home. Now we found this individual foraging on the ground on this edge habitat, which is exactly the kind of place I would expect to find a racer, but living here in the Amazon, these are also capable of climbing trees if they need to, to snatch a lizard meal. Now our target species today is way larger than this, but hopefully finding this little guy means that snakes are on the move and we'll be able to encounter the tiger rat snake that we're looking for. But that is a cute little lifer. After that dry maluber, diurnal snakes were nowhere to be found for several days of relatively cooler temperatures and heavy rainfall. But as soon as the rain lifted, I headed back out to search for our target species. And after a few hours of hiking, I spotted something huge slithering through the understory. You guys, check this thing out. This is a massive tiger rat snake. Holy cow. That is a massive snake. Oh, it's puffing too. Hold on. Hey buddy, check it out. Gosh, that's a gorgeous snake. Okay, this incredible snake right here is a species that I've dreamed of seeing in the wild for years. And you can see that this is a pretty dang impressively sized snake. Actually one of the longest colubrids that you get here, even in the Amazon, it's still one of the longest colubrids. Males, like this one right here, they can actually exceed eight feet in length. But part of the reason that they're so elongate is that tiger rat snakes are a semi-arboreal species. So you'll also notice that the body shape is pretty laterally compressed compared to lots of other large colubrids that might be spending more time on the forest floor. And in the past, another acceptable common name for the tiger rat snake has been the bird snake because it was believed that these were primarily feeding on birds and eggs in their young. But since then, dietary studies have found that actually about 90% of the diet of tiger rat snakes is made up of small mammals, not birds and their eggs. Now, the other cool thing about tiger rat snake diets is that even though this is a really large snake, they actually select for smaller prey on average. And it's theorized that the reason they're selecting for smaller prey items above larger ones, which is the opposite of most snakes, is that it actually increases their ability to navigate this really structurally complex understory that we get here 
in the tropical rainforest systems. An additional benefit of selecting for smaller prey sizes is that these snakes can thrive in disturbed areas that other large colubrids normally cannot compete in because they do need larger prey items. So they're able to provide really important ecological services in disturbed systems where other snakes can't survive. And the other cool thing about tiger rat snakes is that they have a much higher proportion of cones to rods in their eyes compared to other colubrids, which suggests they have really incredible vision. And so through some combination of those traits, this species is actually considered the widest ranging colubrid in all of South America. Man, this has been a beautiful individual to work with. I mean, truly like the best example of the species I can think of. You can see those namesake tiger stripe bands running down the body. That is awesome. And we'll get it right back in the wild. How sick. If you enjoyed learning about the remarkable adaptations of the tiger rat snake, I'm sure that you'd also enjoy seeing my encounter with a surprisingly similar species that lives right here in North Carolina. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.